Okay, we're ready to start. This is the uh, third part of Cascading Style Sheets. Uh, we ought to finish up the content material in this lecture, and uh, then we'll start working on exam problems for uh, the second exam. So let's uh, shut down the music here. Let's go to syllabus. We're on. Uh, we're still working on the May first part of the syllabus, even though it's a little bit lower. So we're down here, but we're covering all of these pieces of material right here. So these first two CSS lectures were this page and this page, and so these are these two pieces. So tonight we're going to do the CSS DOM, and we're going to do tab navigation, which is this one and cross-browser JavaScript, and uh, Lauren Ibsen pop-ups, and user changes the font size. So we're going to get through all of this. Uh, most of the content material was in these two parts, but this will just sort of finish it up, and there's some critical things we're going to talk about here with respect to uh, coding. Okay, so let's start off with the, the DOM examples. Now, these are, these are just some... Uh, Areas we're going to do some things in text and positioning and visibility and links and we'll talk about frame sets a little bit and we're going to look at this from the uh, I we're going to use an IE background here we'll we'll talk a little bit about that but most importantly what we want to talk about is how we spell the CSS properties so we looked at I mean we we actually did go through and we looked at this huge set of CSS properties. And the CSS properties themselves, the list, there was we did like 80 of them, right? So we went through this. So all of these CSS properties, when we go down and look at how, they are, how they're actually structured, here's like the big list, you'll, you'll notice something about what happens when they combine words. Uh, like this text decoration or men height or all of these CSS properties, if they have more than one word, they are connected together with these hyphens. And it means consistent everywhere. Now, what we're going to discover is this is going to be a really serious problem for us when we get to scripting. Okay, so what we see if we go look at the CSS is we see all of these things like Z hyphen index, border hyphen color, font hyphen family, and in the official way we say the CSS, we separate the multiple words with hyphens. Okay, well, one, one of the things that we're going to discover is it's going to be a real problem when we try, try to deal with this stuff in, in JavaScript. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write down the value of the property name. But then in particular when we're trying to assign it some value. And what you're going to notice is if we tried to do this, say, document.all.background color equals to red. Suppose we were trying to do that. And what would happen if we use this word, background hyphen color, as the CSS property? What's going to happen is JavaScript starts reading this and it goes document.all.background. And it interprets this hyphen as a subtraction operator, minus. And your program blows up. Okay, so somewhere along the way, the people who were dealing with the JavaScript version of this and the people who were writing CSS never really thought about what the implication was going to be if we took a CSS property like font size and we tried to use that as a property in JavaScript, because we got a minus sign right in the middle of it. We don't lose an underline. It's not actual minus sign. So the JavaScript will come on and blow this up. Okay, so we, we, have to, we have to do something different. So what we do in JavaScript, we drop the hyphen and capitalize the word following the hyphen. This is camel coding. We'll, we'll talk about that camel coding later, but... This is how we're going to get around it, is we're going to drop the hyphen and in the JavaScript replace the hyphen with that, that C with a capital C or whatever that letter is. Okay, that's problem number one. Okay, 
and we got you know some cross browsers issues, but we we've, these have sort of been minimized as of late, and we're gonna you know not worry about too much about this discussion of document dot all. This is a this is a Microsoft uh, version of how to reference a document, and what it says is that. Document.all means in the list of all documents. And there is there is an array in IE called document.all, which stores all of the tags that have an ID so that we can write them like document.all, write down the ID. We don't have to use the quotation marks like we do when we say get element by ID um, normally. So I'm going to try to sort of minimize this, although we're going to see it throughout this example. This is 2004, so this is you know, I'm pushing 17 years old. So uh, we, we probably just won't run into this very often. We're going to be using this version uh, pretty much everywhere. Okay, let's go look at some of these things. So text. Okay, this is, this is a reasonably simple little page. It just takes a couple of the text. And we're going to look at some scripting issues and how we go about saying it. So we're going to look at, at uh, five properties here. These are text properties, font family, font size, font color, background color, and font weight. And we're going to talk about how to say them in CSS and how to say them in the script. So let's look at let's look at a couple of these times. When we're working on a div block, this is a div block with the text. This is some text in a centered div block named text1. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to, let's go change the font. Make it Arial, Times New Roman, for Dana. Okay, so no, that works really well. So here, here's the, the reference. Again, this is this is an IE reference, and normally we'd say document.get element by ID left parentheses quote text one quote dot style dot font family. Yeah. Well the important thing here is this font family. If we were go over and try to style a paragraph with font family, we'd have to type it like this. So if you type this over in a style tag, it, it just because I don't know what you're talking about. You have to spell it the way the CSS folks decided it was going to look. However, when we get a script, we got to do this to it. Okay, font size. Notice we got the same problem here. We're going to take that. We're going to change it. Six point, ten point. Excuse me, pixels. Fourteen pixels. 20 pixels. Same idea. Font hyphen size. If you're inside a, a style attribution or over here in document.all, it's font size. Hyphen's gone. Font color. That color red, green, blue, gray, like that. Color doesn't have a hyphen, so we don't we don't run into that problem. Right, we're back to it here. Background color. Make the background red. Background green. Notice we've got green and green here, so they would have to see red to even see that background. Blue, gray. Notice this background hyphen color when we're talking about CSS is background with a capital C. Right here when we're talking about script, font weight, normal. Let's, let's go ahead and make this. Oh, that's okay. Bold, bolder, lighter. Okay, generally, most fonts don't have anything other than normal, bold, and italic. Uh, there's, there's not a second level of bold in most fonts. There's sometimes a lighter version. Uh, it's all dependent upon the font, but normally I wouldn't rely on anything other than normal and bold. Okay, so what we see, we see this consistent pattern no matter what the CSS property. If it's got a hyphen in it and you're using a style tag, you got to put the hyphen in. And if you're using a script, you can't put the hyphen in. you got to drop the hyphen and capitalize the next letter. Wow. Um, still pretty much true. Okay, so this is just an example. Remember, this, we looked at 80-something different CSS attributes. These are just a couple to do with text. Okay, so a little couple that deal with positioning. This is a real popular topic for exam two is doing positioning when we're working with top and left. Okay, so we're going to do sort of the same thing here. We're going to uh, <clears throat> have the captain's picture right here. We're going to move it around using top and left. So here is uh, dot style dot top dot style dot left measured in pixels. 
20 pixels from the top, 50 pixels from the top, 100 pixels from the top, from the left, 20, 50, 100, put it back. All right, now more, now image properties, now the height. Okay, we ran into this earlier when we were talking about what happens when you make them different, but we can make it 20, 100, 150, 200 pixels, make it 50. Okay, if we make this 200, it's, it's, it stretches in all of these versions except when it's the same. Okay, so the rule is if you're going to specify height and width, only specify one of them and it'll scale the, the image correctly. If you're going to use them both, you've got to make sure those, that's the same ratio for your actual image. Border width, pretty simple. Same idea. Border color, red color, black, blue, gray. Same idea down here. Um, notice we only got hyphens in border width and border color, so we've got border capital W width and border capital C color. Okay, visibility. This is uh, visibility versus hidden. I've got 10 images out here. Their first five of them are visible. I can hide them. In other words, I, give them, I can make them come back like that. Pretty easy to do. Uh, it's visibility versus hidden. And these, we're going to look at the Z-index. This is talking about the order in which the images are laid down on the page, with the zero index being first, and then anything with Z-index 1 is then 2, then 3, then 4. Actually, I think Z-index starts at 1. Okay, so if we change these Z-indexes and we put number 9, put 5 as Z-index 3, and all these others are Z-index 2, it pulls it to the front. Pulls 6 to the front, 7 to the front, 8 to the front, 9 to the front. Set them all back down. Okay, so this is just Z-index. It's good to some, sometimes you have to use this when you make sure things are laying on top of each other correctly. Uh, we run into the same idea on Z-index. Down here we got that hyphen, so it's Z-hyphen-index in the CSS tag. It's .Z capital I-index in the script. Okay, links. Whew. Okay, links, links are interesting because there's so many things we can do with a link. Um... It's normal. It's normal case. What we do to a link you have visited, what happens when we hover over a link, and what happens when the point in time we click it, and uh, the, it's off doing whatever it's going to do, like bring back a new page. Okay, here's some orange yellow things. Let's let's click on these things and see what happens. So if I roll over it, all right, let's hover. You know it. Turns yellow and it's underlined. Underlines a little difficult to see, like that. Okay, now let's go take this. Let's go to the MIT page. Well, you're not going. You're not going to show me that. There we go. There's the MIT page. So we want to come back. Well. Wow. Now it's turned orange. Okay, so visited, it's orange, no underline, text decoration is none. That's, that's really difficult to remember that if you want to talk about underlining in CSS, it's text decoration. Okay, so we clicked on that, and now we can see it still hovers yellow. Okay. Now we look at this one. This one, you know, just a different version. We got link, visited, and hovered. Now we've, we've already visited the page. So visited should be purple. Uh, if I hover over it, it turns green. If I click on it, it's going to turn turquoise. And <clears throat> it's a visited link. It's purple. This is the old original version. Okay, so if we reload this page. Yeah, it's going to remember we can't clear that out. Okay, frame set. Uh, boy, this this is this is a little difficult to explain, and I'm not going to try to do it. It's, we've been trying to get out of frame sets for years, but what a frame set does, it allows you to take a web page and bring multiple web pages and display them in various rectangular arrangements on the same page. 
So this page, for example, was done with a frame set just so I could show you in something that would be reasonably easy for you to see. So this is top level. We've got a frame set that has two frame rows. This is one frame row. This is the next frame row. Uh, the first frame row is 120 tall, and the second frame row takes up all the rest of the space. The name of this is top part, and the name of this one is bottom part. And these are two different web pages. This is one web page, and this is this web page. Now, I can actually go down here and do this. Let me copy this right here. Go over here and look at this. Let me put this thing in here. Boom. Let me put a one on the end of it. There. There's the top. Okay. All right, so that just makes two web pages. A web page here, this web page here. Okay, now with DC1, it's just a web page. It just looks like that. That's all it says, right? DC2 is the bottom part. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this into columns. One column that's 170 pixels wide, and this one, which is everything else, and this is a web page with this name, and this is a web page with this. Okay, and here is, this is DC3. Here's the code for DC3, like that. And DP4, this is for show window. So this, this was, you know, regionally popular for a while. Here's DC4. Um, it's, it's really gone out of style. You hardly, you know, people sort of said a lot of bad things about it, but for the first, you know, 15 years of the internet, there were a lot of frames on the page and they, they pretty much gone away. Okay. So let's go look at some things that are perhaps a little more relevant to what we're doing. Okay. All right. Let's go look at, um, tab navigation. Now you've seen this. this. These are tabs. Now this this is a very odd thing to do. This is, I think, from my parents' generation, where everything's were were everything was stored in filing cabinets, and we had these file folders that has these tabs, and you would look across the paper file folders, and they would write things on the tab, so you could find something. It's it's a paper variation of the things. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is a CSS example more than anything else. So we're going to propose a page here, which has got five pages of content. There's the HTML page, there's the JavaScript page, there's the CSS page, and then there's the page of the whole thing. And here's the introduction. Now the idea, or what we're trying to make it look like, is that these five pages are stacked on top of one another. That the dashboard tab is first, and the HTML tag is behind that, and the JavaScript tag is behind that, and CSS is behind that, and the whole thing is behind that. And there was this five discrete pages, and we're just going to bring one to the bring them to the front. Now, to create that illusion, what we're going to do is you'll notice that any ones that are seen to be hidden have this blue background, and the one that's visible has white background, and we can't see any of the blue one, the pages of the blue ones, but on the white one, notice we don't see a border here. Let's bring this to the front. We get, get rid of a couple of things like that. Nice effect, especially if we've got relatively simple tabs. Okay, so let's look at how you do this. This, this is, I'm going to up this just a little bit. Okay. So here's the HTML. The HTML is really simple. We've got a div block for every one of them, the contents of the tabs. The, they have IDs D0 through however many tabs you want to have. Don't really care what you put in the tabs. It just doesn't make any difference. Okay, then there's the, the JavaScript. For each one of these pages, I now know what if I start here, I need, I'm going to need five pages. So I'm going to need five titles. So I need an array. It's got my five titles in it. Notice this, is, this example is of itself. Dashboard tabs, the HTML, the JavaScript, CSS, and the whole thing. And when I load the page, 
on this thing called go. I'm going to come down and, and run this little piece of JavaScript. And this is just going to, it's going to make a string that looks like an unnumbered list. That's what it is. It's an unnumbered list and it has a list entry. Right? And it has a link. Pretty odd looking little thing. Well, why, why would this be an unnumbered list? Well, what we're going to do with our unnumbered list is we're going to take away the style. So what's going to happen is the list, and instead of going down the page, is going to be horizontal. So this is my list going this way, across like that. Right? All right. So ultimately what's going to happen is I'm going to set one of the tabs to be in the front. So my last line of laying these things out in this unnumbered list fashion is <clears throat> I'm going to put a number here of the tab that I want to be in the front when the page is loaded. Now we'll see later that what that's going to be is it's going to be page zero, which is this one. But we can set it to, to load up any page initially by changing this number right here on Go. So this creates all the tabs. Let's look at this a little more closely. These are my, these are my list entries. This is what's making the list. And there's a class here named Tab. So this is going to be my CSS. And when I click it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change what tab is showing. And that's a link. On click. Show tabs. All right, let's go on down the page. Here's show tabs. All right, here's show tabs. Well, first thing that happens when I go into show tabs is I make them all look like they're off. I've got, uh, these are the names. This is the name of my pages, D0, D1, D2. I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to say display. The display property is none. I'm going to set the bottom border of the tab to black. Bottom border of the tab to black. And I'm going to change, set the background color to this deep blue. So there's the deep blue. Then, <clears throat> I have one that I chose, whichever one I chose, whatever number I want to bring in here that says show tab. I'm going to display it as a block. In other words, all the other all the other pages will be turned off, but this one will be displayed as a block, and you'll see the content of that page. I'll make the bottom border white, which is this, and then I'll make the background color white. Make it the same color as the page that just came to the front. Really simple idea. So it turns them all off. Turns the one I've chosen on. Okay, now this is this is so this is the entire script. This this is the, the loading it up strip script right here, and this is the change the tab right here. Two little routines. You got to have something which one you want when you're coming in, and it's it's a real simple nice effect. So uh, you can we can control this space. We can control the font. Uh, I was pretty peculiar about, you know, a lot of the CSS, but, you know, that's okay. It, it took a while to get it. You can you can change probably the radius of these things pretty easily. Uh, if we go where I go up and we could look at some of this CSS. I, this is, make this a little larger. So here are my tab, colors, and these are, these are the, this is the span block for the text of the tab. I notice I've set a lot of things on that on the on those to get these what you're looking at here. This is my list. So this is the format of the arrangement of the text in the tabs. And <clears throat> this is the div block that contains the tabs. And notice it's all white and nice and Comic Sans MS font. And this dig, this holds the contents of the page. This one. So it's it's pretty simple. It works, and uh, quick and dirty. Just another example of stuff you can do with CSS. 
Okay, well, this uh, this is well, this is this is a really old page, but I really I really do like this page. This page has been around for a long, a long, long while. Um, this is Chris Halbin. Chris Halbin's a German guy. Uh, he wrote this thing. Uh, this is probably is maybe is one of the oldest pieces of code on all my websites, and it was a great example of absolute positioning, cross browser positioning. In other words, this is one of the first people I ever saw that actually attempted to do something about the cross browser problem. In the effect, in effect, because the browsers did different things under different circumstances. So this is a little way to go about measuring somebody's opinion. I got a taste scale going this way, a temperature scale going that way, and I'm going to feed you some food, and you're going to say, you know, well, it was sort of hot, and it tasted sort of bad. It was really hot and really tasted good. It was really cold. It really left a bad taste in my mouth. It's, you know, it's it's just that. Let's see. And this would be right here. You know, I sort of don't have an opinion. Okay, so if we look at this piece of code, this piece of code has some some interesting pieces to it. You'll see it's got a little cascading style sheet up here. Here's where he lays it out. Now, mostly this, these these are my these are my style. You'll notice we've got passing the ID here in, and then this is setting top and left. Let me show you where the, the little X, the little X is right down here. It's called LA2, the X. And this is the thing that's getting moved around by the script. So right here, this is, this, anytime this comes in as LA2, this is, this is moving that around. That. Okay, this is the load function. Convert the X's into Y's. It's not really a big deal. Uh, this is my event, and here's the magic right here is event dot client X dot client Y. Uh, this is the mouse coordinates. This is the first time we we've actually gone out and tried to get the mouse coordinates, and the mouse coordinates are we're getting the mouse coordinates because we don't want them to be able to click out here. We want them to click inside this box. So we're going to go look at all these mouse coordinates. It's a lower limit, right limit, bottom limit, like that. So that keeps it that keeps you from clicking outside the box. Okay, so that's what most that's what all these if statements are doing. Then I lay down the little red X and I convert some things. And this is this little debug window where the image is located, image X and Y. These are percents from 0 and 1. So like that's 0 0.92, 0 0.93. If I come down here, that's minus 0 0.92, minus 0 0.94. So these are the grid coordinates, and these are the, the actual pixel coordinates. So that pixel is actually 106x. And 208 Y. Now this should be a hundred larger. This should be 206 X and no, oh, I'm sorry, 200 406 Y. So it goes up 200 in each direction. Nice scale, works pretty good. Okay, so that's tab breath, and now you go get this this last one here. Lauren Ibsen pop-ups and user changes the font size. Okay, so I just, you know, I was doing a lot of things and I wound up, wound up doing three things here. Uh, Lauren Ibsen pop-ups and user changes the font size. Let's talk about the, the font size first. Okay, I've, you've seen this on pages before where, you know, you come up to a web page and it's just not very, um, you can't read it and, you know, you got to come over here and futz with this zoom effect over here, but if I tell you right here on the page, I can make the font size bigger for the whole page. Make it really small, like that, like that. Now you'll notice that this, this font didn't change because I'm applying this to the body. I'm making this the font size for the whole body. 
And on, on these, I have specifically set the font size in, inside of this table, where, so it's not going to pick this up. Okay, so font sizes are really simple to do. Let's go up and look at the source of this. So here's change the font. Make this a little larger. Change the font. Okay, CFZ, that's the current font size. Program initializes it to 16. Here's where, here's where we're going to change the font every time. I'm going to get the current font size and get this value of V. Okay, v is the font size that the user wants. So I come down and look at my, my HTML down here. Notice that when you call this routine change font, you're passing it a number. So this is my link down here for the 10 size 10 font. So when I click any of these numbers, it passes that number as this argument right here from 10 to 22 up to the code that says change font. Okay, so let's go back and change font again. Change font is right here. And this is where that number is going to come in. The number is going to be either 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, or 22. Right? So I'm going to get an, what the parameter here, and I'm going to change the border on one of these blocks. Let's go and look at these boxes down at the bottom that have the numbers in them. So you'll notice these are div blocks. Here's a div block, and here's a div block, and here's a div block. So each one of these things is a separate div block. So this is this is F10, this is F12, F14, like that. So those are the names of my div blocks. So up here, I'm going to make the old one and the new one. Okay, so the one that I've currently chosen is referred to as the new one. And the new one is a number, right? And the old number is what it previously was. So here, here it is at zero. Now 10 is the old one, and 12 is now, now the new one. Okay. Well, I lost my code here. Okay. Okay, so we're down we're down in the middle of the code and we're looking at a couple of things here. So what we do is we, we make a one pixel solid blue border on the ones that we've chosen, and we turn the other one to zero zero pixels. So that way the one I chose get turned gets turned into a box. This is sort of interesting how I'm going to affect this. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna I'm gonna do this document dot get elements by tag name. Okay, what that does is that gets every element that is a TD tag and makes an array out of it. An array of TD tags. And they're numbered. TD tags as I go through this document. So for all of the array tags, this is how many there are, array TD tags dot length, I'm going to set their style equal to this font size that you chose here. This goes through a big loop, changes them all. Most is going to change this stuff down here. And I'm going to remember the new current font size. It's current font size, the global variable out here. And that's it. Changing the font size works really well. Makes your page jump a little bit. I don't really care if the page jumps. If I'm somebody sitting down here and sent me a 12 font thing and I can't read it, if I'm on my cell phone or something, I need a really easy way to do that by tapping rather than having to go over here and find the gear and change the zoom. And This is just a way to put it on your page. Okay, part one. All right, now we're going to talk about mouse overs. Okay, this is a mouse over. So I've got this Laura Mipson thing here. Boom. Pop-ups. I want some text to pop up when I roll over something. Now, I've clearly put a little, a little dotted border around this Laura Mibson page. And um, 
We'll talk about Laura Mipson while we're here. Laura Mipson is a website where you can get text. So I'm trying to show you how these things lay out. So I need these five paragraphs of text, right? Like this. So I don't want to sit down and have to type this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Laura Mipson website. It's the Laura Mipson website. I've been using this for years. And what you can do is you can order up some text in Latin. Now, what it happens to be, it happens to be, you know, something that was spoken by Cicero in 45 B.C. And it's from the extremes of good and evil. And it's a treatise on ethics. I, I can't read Latin. I had Latin in high school. It doesn't mean I can read it. And it's this big, this big giant document. And the good part of the good part about it is, it, when you're when you're doing web layouts and you need this text, I don't want to have to read the text. I just want to see what I want to see the text so I can see the font, see how the text lays out on the page. Um, this is an X. I use this thing all the time. So you can order up any amount of words you want. You can order paragraphs, or you can order words, or bytes, or lists. So I order words. So if you want. 700 words, and do you want to start at the beginning of the speech with this phrase, Lauren Ibsen? So the reason this is called this is the first two words of Cicero's speech is Lauren Ibsen. That's, that's what, so there it is. So you take this page, that's, this is 700 words, like this. Take this, cut and paste it. Don't have to read it, but it'll show you how your page is going to lay out when you put text in it. It's really, really a useful, useful site. Okay, pop-ups. The pop-up part. Okay, so the way the pop-up part works is, um, I just need it. Just, it's really pretty short. I just have some text, and what I want to do is when I roll over that text, I want to pop it up. So over to our Lauren Nipson. Same idea. This is the pop-ups. Okay, so I've got some text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that text in a div block. And I'm going to say its position is relative. It's an inline div block, and i got a blue dot border around it. And there's my pop-up text. Now, this, this div block also has a mouse over. On mouse over equals to... This is code. Document.getElement by the pop-up text visibility is visible on mouse over. Boom. Pop-up text. So this thing. And then on mouse out, when you roll out of the little blue dotted thing, the pop-up disappears. Like that. Okay, so there's a div block. And the div block has got these CSS characteristics. It's got a mouse over spec. It's got a mouse out spec, and then there's some text. There's my text. But then there's span block with ID pop-up text. And it has these properties. It's, it's hidden. It's got an absolute position, and this is where I want to put the pop-up. I want it to go up 35 pixels. The normal top is measured pixels down. If, if the top is negative, it goes up. And left is zero, so we'll notice that this thing, so just a little bit above it, right, 35 pixels above it, right up here. And there's my image, there's my 50 pixel image of the captain. And there's my text. Put it all together, and it looks like this. So here's my div block, here's my mouse over. My, my, my mouse over only has one line of JavaScript, JavaScript, document dot get all it might be pop up dot style dot visibility is visible. Pop up. On mouse out, the pop up text is hidden. So here's the pop up. Pop up text is visible, hidden. On mouse out, what to do when the mouse leaves it is, it hides it. Roll over it, it's visible. Roll off, it's hidden. And here is, this is the pop-up itself. 
It's got a solid red border. Go back up here so we can see this solid red border. There's a solid red border. Uh, position absolute, minus 85 and 0. So that's probably a minus 85 right there. And a 0 right there. And there's the captain, 50 wide. There's the text in the span, in the div. Div beginning, div end, span beginning, span end. So the weird thing about this, this is the text you can see, right? And this span block goes right beside that text. And it's all in a div block. So that really useful. You don't have to put the border, well, you don't put the borders on it, you know. You don't have to do anything. So that's pop-ups. So pop-ups work. So this is font size on one page. Right? User changes the font size. Here's pop-ups right here. And here is Laura Mibson when you need it, and you're going to need it if you're designing web pages. Okay, so that's pretty much all we're going to try to get done tonight. This is uh, sort of the end of it. This sort of ended up at an odd place. We got about you know, 40 minutes into this, so we'll just call this one a, a night, and uh, the next one will come up. We'll go, we'll start looking at the exams. So play me off here. Stop the recording.